Hello, my name is Kaching Song, and I am the Fusion 360 Community Manager. And recently, we've announced some changes that we were making to the Fusion 360 for personal use offering. Now, most of these changes already happened, but the one that hasn't happened yet is the 10 document limit. We got a lot of questions from you around what does the experience of the 10 document limit look like? How do you know when you've reached your limit? What is the interactions? So I sat down with Jason Swetsoff, one of our user experience designers working on this project. And we talked about some of the new concepts that we're working on and some of the new UI elements that we're introducing. And hopefully through this, it'll give you a better understanding of what is changing and what you should expect when the change comes. We also made a blog post around the 10 document limit change, going into more detail around the correct terminology that we're using to the experience, to the interactions, to all the concepts that are talked about in this video. So if this change is gonna impact you, we highly encourage you to also check out the blog post. So with that, let's check out what Jason and I talked about. Hello, Jason, welcome. Thanks for hopping on. Sure, no problem. One of the things that uh, I think would be good to clarify with us here is, you know, the term uh, document versus projects, because I think people are using that in different contexts and, you know, everyone works in Fusion 360 a little differently. So I think it's good to first align on what those things mean. You know, right now in the data panel, if you go to the home page of your data panel, you can see that these are all essentially projects that I've created or projects that I'm part of. And part of that, uh, knowing that these are projects is you've got this all projects filter here. Um, if you don't see this in the data panel, you may be within a project. And in order to go back to that, you just gotta click on that home button. Um, so this is really what we mean by projects. Yeah, yeah, this is a great thing to clarify. A project is at the top level. Yep, that makes sense. Then, you know, when you go into a project, so if I go into my stuff, ka stuff, uh, you see there's also folders within a project. So you can create folders to better organize stuff. And everything else in here, these are essentially what we mean by documents. So if you click on a version number, you see this is a fusion design. So this is a fusion design document. This is what will count towards that uh, 10 document limit, right? Right, right. Um, and it's fusion specific documents that are gonna to count towards your limit. So fusion designs, fusion electronic designs, right. and, and drawings. And drawing, yeah. Okay, so these are basically like the three main documents that will count towards that limit. Right. Cool. Okay. And obviously you can have images and PDFs, uh, Word documents, mm. and, and all of those can live within the within a project or a folder, but they're not going to count towards your document limit. Okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, this looks like the, the mock-up and wireframe that you worked on. I noticed that there's a counter at the top here. Um, can you talk a bit about what that counter is? Yeah. So um, we wanted an easy way to keep a count of, of how many documents, uh, editable documents. You need. So we decided to put it in two different places. Uh, one's in the top right, uh, next to the tabs. You know, if you have the data panel closed, you can still keep track of your documents. And then we have mm. one at the top of the data panel. Um, you know, as you're browsing your documents, you can you know, easily keep track of your documents, your editable document limit there as well. I see there's also a editable, my editable document uh, folder or, or filter here. Uh, that is something new too, right? Yeah, yeah. This is gonna be a really powerful place to see all of your editable documents, no matter where they live. Um, you may have editable documents in different projects or different folders. This gives you an easy way to access all of those in one place. Okay, so now uh, let's say that we're working on this design. I think this is telling me to save. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save this document. And now we're at 10 out of 10. So this, this, this document here was an unsaved uh, document. And it uh, looks like it's also showing me a notification, letting me know that I've reached my limit. 
now I'm going to go to the my editable document filter. So we have 10 editable documents and right now in that filter, you're seeing all 10 of those. So the other thing I'm noticing is you have uh, the there's editable button or drop down in each of these documents. Now, uh, let's see if I click on one. Okay, it looks like I can mark it as read only or editable. And this basically means that if I change editable to read only, what I'm assuming this will happen is once I'm sure of it, it's going to open up a slot out of the 10, 10 document limit, right? So because I'm marking right. one of the editable documents as read only, this will basically give me nine out of 10. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's say this is okay. Okay, so now we're at nine out of 10. Well, this is also telling me, okay, I can mark this as read only just as another, another example. And right. that goes away, I'm at eight out of 10. Okay, that makes sense. So now, now you have two slots open. You can either, uh, look through your documents and you know maybe you have something that you're working on in the past and 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 you want to iterate on it or update it you can activate that and take up on the slots or maybe you want to start a new document and and now you're free to do that as well okay so let's look at this example this is showing us that right now we are at 10 out of 10 we also have a number of documents in here that Two are editable, one is read only. I'm gonna click on this, opening this document. So now the document is open. And I think one thing to note here is that even if you're at 10 out of 10, uh, you can still open read only documents. Uh, you can still open them and view them. I think the difference is, is you just can't, you can't save any of the changes you make in this read-only document. So yeah, if you're exploring your documents and, and you have read-only documents and you just want to open them up and see if they're the right document or, or you want to reference something in there, that's, yeah. you know, you'll, you'll be able to do that. Got it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also notice that you can't mark this file as editable because it's not uh, oh, right. uh, open for it. That's a great um, out. Okay. If you're like, you know, hey, I want to start working on this, this document, but yeah. Um, you know, I know I have some documents that I'm not currently working on. You can just kind of click that um, if you see in the in the top of the canvas. Oh, manage editable that, documents, right? Yeah, and and that'll bring you to that that filter that we talked about earlier. And now you can easily choose which one of these files you want to make read only to free up space. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So I can mark this as read only. Now that goes away. Now I'm nine out of ten, and it looks like in the message here, it's also telling me that now I can make this document editable. Yep. Correct. So I don't have to go all the way back to like where this document lives to mark it editable. I can just do it right within the, the canvas. Yeah. yeah, we've made it really convenient and just put it in the canvas as well. So Jason, we also heard a bunch of questions from the community around, you know, what would happen if uh, I was working with a document that has xrefs in that document that let's take a look at this example which is i think what what this is showing so there is a coffee table document and that coffee table document has three xrefs in it there's the hairpin leg which is editable uh top and bottom which is editable but the sides are read only and also note that we are at eight eight of ten documents yeah so you know an xref is essentially its own document uh, you can have read-only or editable xrefs within your document. Both are, are valid. Obviously, um, if you wanted to make edits to an xref that was uh, read-only, you would have to uh, mark that as editable first. Okay. Uh, let's see. Looks looks like I can also open open up the sides uh, as a read-only document, like we just talked about earlier with the, the previous example. And then since we are at eight of 10, uh, we're not at the limit, I can make this editable and you know, essentially go back to the coffee table uh, or even just start making edits in this, the sides document. Yeah, like, like you said, um, you can just make edits and then go to the parent file and update it and you'll see those changes as, as you normally would. So hopefully that gave you a better understanding of what this change is going to look like and what you can expect when the change happens. 
as always, we're always listening. We're working with the community, working with you, and always listening to your feedback. So if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to post it in the comments section below, and we will be reading all of them. We'll also keep you posted on any updates around this change and as we get closer to the final design. Again, if you haven't checked out our recent blog post around the 10 document limit change, we highly encourage you to check it out. It goes into way more detail of what's being covered in this video. With that, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support, and I will catch you on the next video.